Welcome to the World Athletics Podcast. This is a special episode celebrating women in athletics. I'm your host, Joanna Hayes. My special guests are Gail Devers, Sally Pearson, and Dervo O'Rourke. This year, 2021, right? The the Tokyo Olympics. And so I wanted to kind of ask each of you, what is your either most favorite or most memorable or both moment from one of the Olympic games you went to? And Gail, you were at the, you were there before um, all of us. So what, what do you, what, you have a lot to think about though. You have a lot to choose from. Yeah, <laughs> no, you have a lot of games to choose from. Like how many, which one? <laughs> That's called old lady privileges. <laughs> Okay. Um, I'm going to say, well, my, my, um, I won't say my first, Olymp- my first Olympic gold medal, first of all, is memorable to me. Um, more so, in, and that was in 92. My first Olympic Games was 1988, but my first gold medal was 1992. And it's memorable because I was known as a hurdler. But the irony of that is that my Olympic gold medals have come in the sprints or the relay. And so I always tell people, if you look in the Olympic books, you wouldn't know I ran the hurdles at all because <laughs> I was either not in the um, the medal count. But world championships, yes. So memorable for me was my first one and more so because of what I had gone through, my Graves disease and coming back from that. Um, I remember crawling, you know, just 17 months prior to the Olympic Games, wondering if I'd ever walk again. And then I, you know, my biggest thrill was running around, taking my victory lap and telling the cameraman to keep up because, you know, you just don't know what I've gone through. And he was like, slow down. You're supposed to savor the moment. I'm like, you better keep it up. But um, so that was probably my most memorable. Um, what I'm famous for is the Gail Devers <laughs> fall. You can even Google that. <laughs> and they say Gail Devers fall. So my fall over the Olympic hurdles. But what I took from the, you know, I I never cried over that race. And what I took from it was that, you know, you start off a race and you have your goals and and your dreams and your thoughts of what you're going to do. And my, my goal is always to finish the race, to get across the finish line. If I do my best, you know, of course you want to, you know, doing your best means for me, it means giving my 100%. It may not be coming across the finish line in first place, but I'm a winner by my efforts. And people always look at me strange when I say that that race in 1992 at the Olympic Games and the hurdles, I was I was successful. And they're like, how can you be successful? You fail. I said, because I finished the race, first of all, and I did all that I could do on that day. It was not my time to win, obviously. I do believe in destiny and things happening for a reason. And it was, you know, if you look through history, the girl who won, that was the first time that Greek had won a medal and she won a gold medal. And so what it did for me, I didn't win a gold medal, but it encouraged me and inspired me to come back. And I was able to say that I've gone to five Olympic Games and there's not a lot of people who can say that. So I take I take everything in my life. I find something positive out of the as my kids say, you you find the best situation out of what somebody else thinks is the worst. And I said, I do because I live off a positive. So, I mean, that's so amazing, Gail, because you're right. People can understand how how can you say that? You know, you fell down. You were supposed to win all these things, but they don't see it from your eyes and from your experience. And you've been through a lot prior to that. And yeah, you finished the, I mean, we've seen it. I'm sure both of you ladies have seen it. You're crawling, you know, across that line. You finished that race and you finished in fifth, right? So like you didn't even get last and you fell. So I think there's something to be said about that, right? (laughs) You actually finished before some people in the race (laughs) falling down. So yeah. And and it's, it's to each, it's, (laughs) <laughs> you are pretty incredible. I mean, I think we all know that. Um, so Sally, what about you? What what experience do you remember most? Um, the first part of my 2008 um, silver medal was even before I got to the uh, Olympics. And I remember emailing my auntie who lives in England because obviously we all need somewhere to stay when we go to Europe to do the circuit. And so I'd already been over to Europe and come home before the Olympics so I could prepare a little bit more. And then I went back over to Europe. But before I went over, I emailed my auntie to ask if I could stay with her uh, while I did some competitions. And she said to me, you can only stay here if you win an Olympic medal. I was like, oh, okay. No pressure. (laughs) Obviously being sarcastic. (laughs) But but then as soon as she said that, it was like, huh. Something just sort of lit a fire in me. And it's like, okay, I'm going to do that. And it was almost like what um, Derva was saying about her world indoors is it was, it was like, it was guaranteed in my head. Like I am going to do that. I know that I can do that. 
And I, I don't think I was even ranked in the top five at this stage going into um, the second phase of my European campaign. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to do that. And I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. And so that was a really interesting, um, I guess, growth period in my um, um, being, a, being an athlete. And I remember then I remember being at the Olympics and I just – I was so uncomfortable being there. I didn't enjoy the heat. I didn't enjoy the semifinals, but I was so excited for the finals. I remember getting ready for, I remember the day before the final, after my semi, I was just cranky. I was really cranky. And I remember one of our um, veteran athletes in our team, she was a long jumper and she just took me to the cafeteria for lunch and I just said, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm cranky. I just, I don't want to be here. I don't know what's going on. She goes, what's, what's, what, what's going through your head? I'm like, I've got to race these girls. They're so fast. And how do I do this? Like, what do I have to do? And she goes, have you raced these girls before? And I said, well, yes, every time I raced in Europe. And she goes, well, there you go. And she goes, and I said, okay, well, that's one point tick. And she said, have you beaten these girls before? I said, well, yeah mostly all the races that I've run so far. She goes, well, there you go. You know how to race them and you've beaten them before. So what? why is this any different? I said, because it's the Olympic Games and it's the Olympic final. It's different. And it's got that word there, Olympics. And she goes, yes, but you know how to race, you know how to compete and you know how to win. And so you just have to remember that when you go and step on that track in the final. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, that's easy enough. And <laughs> that was just – that was um, another interesting turning point um, being an athlete that it doesn't matter who you're running against. You've, you, well, you've raced them before, and that's what you have to remember. And so then I stood on the, on the start line, and I just enjoyed it. I loved being there. I loved the moment. I didn't, I didn't even – don't even remember who was in the race at the time – I don't, I don't remember any of the girls who were on the outside lanes because I would think I was in lane three, so I couldn't even see anyone over there. And I just enjoyed every moment of it. And one thing that I really remember that felt like a little bit of fate for me was I was setting up my blocks and then I had this um, – I had this uh, – the, 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 the front of the block, you know, how there's a bit of a plate there sometimes, it was quite reflective. And there was a reflection of the Olympic flame on my blocks. And I looked down, I'm like, oh, this is fate. This means something to me. I, I just feel so at home now. I feel almost guaranteed that I'm going to get this medal and I'm just going to do my best and get out fast. And I remember, then I remember, so gun went off and for the first five hurdles, I was winning the Olympic Games <laughs> and I distracted myself. I and I, I was saying out loud, I, I felt like I was saying it loud, oh, my God, I'm winning the Olympic Games. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, come on, focus, 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 focus. You're going to lose this if you don't. And then obviously Lolo Jones just went blitzing past me. And I'm like, it's okay, it's okay. You've still got this. You've still got this. And I'm running, I'm running. And then she, Lolo faltered. She tripped and went backwards. And I'm like, oh my goodness, focus, focus, focus. That's all I kept saying to myself. And then obviously Dawn Harper went past, went over, finished um, crossing the finish line. And I I knew that I was in for a chance. I still knew I was in for a chance and I had to look. So I kind of dipped, turned my head and I'm like, whoa, I think I've got a medal here. I think I actually did what I said I was going to achieve at these Olympic Games. I think I've got silver. And um, then I think the most memorable moment for me was having that realization that my name came up on the scoreboard as a medalist. And that was something that felt like it was set in stone. Then it was like, yeah, this means that I'm going to be in the Olympic history books forever. There's my name. This is what I've achieved. And I am super excited by this right now and nothing can really tear me down. And that was probably my most memorable Olympic moment was Beijing. I remember. Sorry, that's a long story there. <laughs> no, it's great because I just, as you're talking, like you're filling in some gaps for me because I remember the race. I had raced you earlier in the, in the season. And I knew, again, like you said, those first five, you were gone. And I, I watched the race unfold. And, you know, as you said, how everything happened. But what was really memorable for me was what you just said, your reaction, your celebration. You were, I mean, it was amazing. It was just pure joy. Right. And just seeing that is what this sport, I think, is about. Yeah. It's winning is great. We all want to win. We want to 
do all these things and make money and all that is wonderful. But that pure joy, I think, is what keeps you going. And it's what draws yeah. other people to the sport. Yeah, because that's really what it's about at the end of the day. Gail finishing a race, you know, you meddling like you said you were. But yeah, it's the process in which you get to the moments of the pure joy. Um, so that was an amazing story. What about you, Darla? Yeah. What 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 were your favorite moments oh. of your um, Olympics? Both of my Olympic stories are connected to th these two ladies Olympic Games. So um, when Gail ran at the 92 Olympics in Barcelona, I will never forget it. I was in um, the front room in my parents' house and we grew up like within the state with all these other kids. And I could see all these kids out the window playing outside on the green. And normally I loved running and playing with all the kids. But for some reason this day, I could see this on television. And it was it was Gail's race. Like, and I just remember thinking, thinking I couldn't leave the room. Like I had to stay watching her. And I, I don't know, like she was, you were just so iconic to me, even at that age. I was like, I have to stay watching. I have to stay watching her. And I remember the race. I remember it so well. I was like 11 and I remember you finishing. That's what I remember about the race. I remember you kept trying. And I, I, I was there at my dad and I remember saying like, this is, like, this is amazing. Like, could, could I go, like, can you go to the Olympics? Like, is this a thing, you know? Um, so that was what that was my earliest memory of the Olympic Games, and it was honestly really, really impactful on me, especially because I was only ever really seeing kind of a bit of distance running. I was, wasn't really seeing sprints or sprint, and I had just jumped a hurdle for the first time, and I just remember being like, "This is outrageous! <laughs> like this is it's like I just didn't know it existed till her race. It was unbelievable to me. It was so so impressive, but just so just such an impact. And then. With Sally in 2008, like I went into the 2008 Olympics from a small country. I put so much pressure and stress on myself that like if I didn't win an Olympic medal, the whole entire country in my head would have been devastated. It was a disaster. Like I, I put so much stress on myself and I went there and the whole year I tore my groin four weeks before the Olympics, couldn't cross a hurdle. First time I hurdled in four weeks was the heat of the Olympic Games and it just all fell apart. And I remember sitting in the stand and seeing Sally's like pure joy and being so, so gutted for myself. And then I got on the plane on the way home and I sat next to this person who I didn't really know. I, he looked vaguely familiar um, and I, I knew he wasn't from track. And I was like, I started to explain to him my devastation. I was like, I'm so, de I used to be good at, and now I'm actually terrible. I'm like, da, da, da. And he was so sensible and he had stuck, he was stuck next to me on a plane for 10 hours. Imagine like what a disaster for him. Like this girl who was about to start crying. He was just like, oh God. And um, he, anyway, he ended up, he ended up getting off the plane and uh, he said, he said, um, and I'll tell you why I know this. He said, God, I was next to this girl. He didn't stop talking for 10 hours, but, um, and I think she still really loves what she does but she just has to figure it out. And the reason I know that that's what he said to his mom is because he's my husband. So I ended oh, up that's marrying. So funny. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. So I ended up wow. sitting next to the guy on the plane who, became, so he went to two Olympics for sailing. So he's an Olympic sailor. And like, I think if I, if he came into my life at the, and he made me find like why I loved the sport again. And I took from that moment on, from that plane journey, I swear, I never felt pressure in track anymore a few of the things just landed for me. I was like, it, no, it doesn't matter to anybody but me. And um, I let it go. Like, I just let it all go. And even someone in the Irish press said to me the other day, are you devastated you don't have an Olympic medal? I was like, look, I would love an Olympic medal. I would like love an Olympic medal in my house. But I had to find myself again. Um, and I had gotten quite lost, I think, at that point in my career. So, um, yeah, definitely when Sally was celebrating, I was lost up in the stand trying to find myself. So I, I did find my way back to myself and it definitely set me up for my life after track. I think I started to, I became a better person out of it, if that makes any sense. Absolutely. It makes perfect sense. And I, I love the story about your husband.